On today's episode, we are gonna be doing some DIY IKEA hacks. I feel like I haven't done that for a while. And today I've got my good friend, hey. Lisa. And she's got an awesome DIY and home decor channel. If you're looking for a super high-end look on a budget, she's your girl. We're gonna go shopping today and then we are gonna pick out some items and then we'll go home and we'll do hacks on them. It's gonna be so much fun. So let's get on the road. What let's do you say? Do I say let's go. Here, let's go shopping. Did you know you can get a Mona Lisa at Ikea? Woo! So if you're looking for kitchen ideas, they've got a lot of good ideas here. So come check it out. That's a lot of vinegar. <laughs> <laughs> So we're out shopping and this is Lucia and Cynthia and they have found some fun stuff that they want to show us. What do you got there? Oh, it's a beautiful plant with a modern white. That's beautiful. Look at this gorgeous watering pot. Oh my word, that is so cute. Isn't that pretty? <laughs> so these are DIY miners and if you ever see me, come say hi. I don't know. I just feel like that there's so many things in here that are totally hackable. They just are like, you just need a little something extra. A little zhuzhing. A little zhuzhing. <laughs> What do you think I'm gonna do with this? <laughs> the fun. I'm not gonna hack these, but these are my favorite laundry baskets. They are very durable, unlike my other ones that break all the time. These are awesome, so I'm picking up a few more. It's Lisa and Mona Lisa. Okay, so last year I did an easy hack on this floor lab. I got more ideas for it, so I'm not gonna buy this one because I already have it, but we're gonna do like 2.0. This is perfect for a pottery barn. Hey Lisa, how do hey. you feel? How do you feel like you did? I feel like we did really good. We got some great things. I'm excited to go organize my kitchen. Woohoo! Okay, I'm super excited about what I've got. We are gonna head back to my studio and get hacking things. Okay, so we are back from our Ikea shopping trip and I had so much fun shopping with Lisa this time around. Ran into some DIY Niners, that's always fun. Also, a couple months ago, another DIY Niner issued me a challenge and she asked if I could take a plain Ikea dresser and give it a French country twist. Challenge accepted, Deborah Fusilier. I hope that I'm pronouncing that correctly. So for our first Ikea hack, we are gonna be doing a French country twist on the Tarva dresser. The first thing I set out to do is to build it. And boy, is that always a challenge. <laughs> it always takes way longer than you think. So I got that mostly built, but I was kind of up against a wire because we had a ton of rain coming and I wanted to add some scalloped edge trimming to it. So I have been usually hauling my miter saw out to my grass area, but with the rain literally could start at any second. I've just set myself up in the corner of my covered lanai here. Look how cute this trim is. I think it's gonna make an adorable kind of French filling addition to our our Tarva dresser, so I'm really excited. We've got the measurements, let's make our cuts. I'm gonna make a cut here, right in the center, and then we will make sure that it's evened up on both sides. We beat the rain, let's go get this installed. So to attach our trim, I just took some scrap wood and nailed it to the underside of our dresser. That gave me something to nail it in on the front side to add this scallop trim. And I really feel like adding this scallop trim that I picked up at the Home Depot really gave it that French flair. And so that was such a good addition. Then I proceeded to finish building the drawers and all of that. It took so much time. Oh, Ikea, why do you have to make it so difficult? I mean, it's not really difficult. It's just time consuming. If you follow the directions, you should be good, which is what I did for both the body and the dressers. And then with that built, I had bought some additional kind of um, pencil trim. 
I'm not exactly sure what it's called, but it's pretty small trim and I use it a lot. So I probably should figure out what the name of it is. So to each side of the dresser, I wanted to add some picture box molding just to give it a little bit of interest to this kind of boring piece. And then I had originally planned to also kind of do some picture box molding on the front side, but because of another element that I'm gonna be adding in just a second, there just wasn't room. So I left it as is. And then I took the molding that I had got for the front of it and covered up the seam where that scalloped trim met the dresser. And it really gave it a pretty finished look. Now, if you've noticed in this, I am using these really cool miter shears, which are essentially actually very, very sharp scissors that can cut through kind of smaller pieces of wood. I will link those in the description box below. But what's really cool about them is you can cut things on a miter, like a 45 degree angle, or you can cut them straight. And it makes it really handy. I don't need a saw for any of this, just these really awesome scissors. And then you'll see that I'm using a Brad Nailer nail gun power tools just always make things better. You don't have to use this. You can use a hammer and nails, but I'm telling you, one of my favorite all-time tools is a finish nailer or a brad nailer because then you don't have to swing a hammer. It's super easy. <laughs> so with all of that additional molding added to our dresser, we putty all the nail holes and then we let that dry. And then of course we sand it down and then give it a good wipe down and then it's ready for paint. To prime it, I used some chalk paint that I had on hand. It works as a great great primer. I also had some primer. It was just easier to grab my chalk paint. So you can use regular primer as well. And then I used some leftover trim paint that I have all throughout my house. And that's a semi-gloss in Sherwin-Williams extra white. And then I just painted that all over my dresser to give it a nice foundation. And kind of the piece de resistance is I found this French floral rub-on transfer and all you do is kind of lay it on the front of your dresser and take like a popsicle stick, it actually came with a piece of wood and you very carefully rub it onto the front of your dresser. And anywhere that there is a drawer seam, you can take like a straight edge blade and kind of cut that down. And then you just rub it, rub it, rub it, and then peel it back as it rubs on. And then um, I always just kind of take my hand and go over the top just to make sure everything is securely in place. But what is so cool about this is then it looks like you've got this hand painted image on the front of your dresser and it's so pretty, right? I love this image. I got it off of Amazon. I'll link it in the description box below. They have a lot of different designs. I have a feeling I might use this technique again because it is so cool. So with that image on, then I wanted to add some crystal knobs because that is very French country, isn't it? <laughs> and so we drilled some holes for that and then added those beautiful knobs. Then we could have left it as is on the sides just with a white picture box molding. It looks really pretty, but I decided to go one step further and paint some pink stripes on the side. I just wanna seal the edges of your painter's tape with something. A lot of times I'll use the undercoat color. This time I just used some clear matte sealer that I use on chalk paint sometimes and it let it dry really quick. And then of course put on my pink chalk paint. I started off with like a, a brighter pink and then I toned it down with Folk Art Barely Pink chalk paint. And I did some stripes on the side. While I was painting those pink stripes, Dolly really, really wanted to pick, play catch. And so I'm painting pink stripes and throwing the ball because she just wanted to play. And she's like, come on, mom, I wanna play. <laughs> So multitasking, so painting stripes and playing fetch at all the same time. And then of course, when you pull back the tape, it reveals perfectly straight lines, which is awesome. In the end, oh my word, this might be my favorite Ikea hack I've ever done. The transformation is from about as boring as you can get to something that is so pretty, so feminine. I don't really have a great place to display this. So for now it's going in my craft room until I figure out a better plan because it's not going anywhere. I absolutely adore this piece. It is so pretty. So thank you, Deborah, for the challenge. I hope I did you proud. And if any of you have a challenge for me, let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to see it. I might not be able to get to every one of them, but we'll see what I can do. 
So for our next IKEA hack, I'm not exactly sure what this is called, but it's a mape, and I'm gonna call it a mini dresser. There are a lot of possibilities that you could do with this. So I may hack this next one again, but this is what I did for this time around. So what I did is I took a couple of packages of paint stick, and we are going to literally trim this out like a shaker style effect, if you will. And I started trying to cut it out with those same miter shears, but it was not really getting the job done. I think you'd have to have really sharp miter shears. I've used my miter shears a lot, so my blade might be due for a sharpening. So I just took it out onto my miter saw and cut them down there. So I did the sides long and then the horizontal parts shorter. And then on the bottom one, I kind of made a faux two drawers, even though it was one long one. Then I glued all of our pieces on with hot glue and made sure that they the seams were as tight as possible and I used 14 paint sticks in total. Also while I was out cutting down the paint sticks I saw my scrap pile you know some scrap wood and I decided to add some feet to this little dresser to just kind of lift it up a little bit and I just cut some squares out of the blocks. They were like one and a half inches by one and a half inches easy peasy. And I ended up gluing those on the bottom as well. This is Gorilla Hot Glue. It's a very strong hold. It's very hot. And if you get it right on there, it's a very strong hold and should be fine for our purposes. With that all on, I decided I wanted to add some wood knobs and I did kind of X marks to find center and drilled holes in the center for some knobs and then attached those. With all of the embellishments added, it was time to paint and I used the same Sage colored chalk paint by Folk Art. It's kind of a blue green color. It's really pretty and it kind of matches some of my other decor in my main area. So I thought it would work perfectly. And then I let the paint dry. And then once it was dry, I decided to rough it up around the edges, especially kind of working on the edges to kind of curve them off and soften that look a little bit. And that's it. So this is a totally doable hack. I Again, I think that there are a lot of possibilities with this mape box thing. <laughs> I don't know what it's called, but I think that there's a lot of different ways we could hack it and you could change out the color and you could do different knobs and give it a different look. But I thought this was a relatively easy hack. It gave it totally different look. It's gonna be in my entryway, a great place to toss the mail, my keys, all that. Kind of like a little workstation because it seems like a lot of stuff gets kind of dropped there, but I really love the way this looks. I think this IKEA hack turned out good, but what do you think? So for our next IKEA hack, I am going to be doing the Hektar floor lamp over again. <laughs> About a year ago, I did the Hektar floor lamp and I just gave it a, like a really quick mini makeover. I had thought about doing some other things to it, but at the time I just decided to keep it as simple as possible. But now it was time to make sure that it kind of coordinated with the, and Dolly wants to say hi. Say hi, Dolly. Hello. So this time around, I wanted to make sure it matched all of the other lighting in my living room now because it really kind of stands out. It was like a subtle difference, but just different enough that it was kind of driving me crazy. So almost everything in my living room is kind of matte black finish and then gold. The original color is kind of a bronzy color. It's really, actually it's not even bronzy. It's kind of like a really dark brown. And in my first makeover, I did gold accents in a couple of spots and it was kind of a darker gold, not the right shade of gold. Those little subtle differences have been kind of driving my OCD side of me <laughs> a little crazy. So it was time. Plus I wanted to do some of the other things I had considered doing the first time around. So let's, let's do 2.0. So the first thing I did is I kind of disassembled it a little bit and then I flipped the shade upside down and we spray painted the inside of that in 18 karat gold. Uh, we let that dry. I also did the little um, nuts on the side in that gold and then also the little hanging top part of the, the lamp section in that bright gold. With that all painted gold, I let that fully dry and then what I did is I flipped over the shade and wrapped up that top portion in a plastic bag 
and then I went ahead and spray painted the rest of the lamp in a matte black finish to kind of match everything else in the room and let that fully dry. And then I reassembled it, took it back into the living room, and then I got this really cool kind of crystal, I don't know what it's called, like a shade. And all you have to do is slip that on the underside of the, the light bulb and then screw the light bulb back in. And then you have this beautiful crystal thing, which matches some of the other elements in the room as well. So from the original piece from Ikea, which was all brown with a white drum, to this, which is a little bit more glitzy, a little bit more glam, <laughs> I love it. I think it looks super cute and has eased my <laughs> little OCD problem. <laughs> In reality, I'm not really OCD. I'm actually very, very chill, but it was driving me a little crazy and now it's not. It's really pretty. I love how it looks, but what do you think? Okay, so I did have one more Ikea hack for you, but it failed. <laughs> but I am determined to finish that off. So if you want to see that, let me know if you like these Ikea hack episodes. It might be in the next one if you want to see what that is. Um, stay tuned for that. That will be coming up on a future episode. Also, if you have some Ikea challenges for me, let me know in the comment section below. We'll see what we can do. Okay, so don't forget to pop on over to Lisa Burningham's channel. She's got some kitchen organization Ikea hacks for you. Her home super organized, super clean. So I know they'll be good. And if you enjoyed this episode, here's another one that I think you'll like as well. And if you haven't done so already, consider hitting that subscribe button right there. It's super easy to do. And I would love it if you joined the DIY Niner family and to all of my DIY Niners, I just want to remind you that you are more powerful than you know. We'll see you next time. Bye.